why do I find glaucoma glamorous? Uh, well, it depends uh, what you uh, mean by glamorous. Uh, if you are under, uh, if you want very quick, uh, you know, gratification or uh, monetary things, then glaucoma is not probably very glamorous. But uh, if uh, you know, helping people uh, is is in your mind and creating new knowledge in your mind, then glaucoma actually gives you a lot of uh, opportunities. Uh, there are many no, unknown things about glaucoma and uh, there's a lot of opportunity to do research to find newer methods of diagnosis, treatment and helping people in different ways uh, because glaucoma is a lifelong uh, problem so it gives you a very long uh, as, uh, opportunity to be associated with your patient for a very long time and help their, them and understand their problems uh, and create uh, you know, newer methods of treatment so that way is very exciting and I find that uh, aspect to be very glamorous about glaucoma. So what made me choose glaucoma as a lifelong profession? Uh, well, uh, I didn't exactly choose uh, it consciously. I think it, it just happens uh, happened over a period of time. Uh, when I started, I was doing everything, cataract, retina, oculoplastics, glaucoma, uh, among other things. Uh, but I think uh, uh, in early 90s, uh, when I, I got an opportunity to work with Professor Amol Gupta, who is my mentor, and uh, he was doing uh, retina at that time and as well as running glaucoma clinic. So I started working with him and uh, over a period of time, the most of the glaucoma patients, uh, they started kind of accumulating in uh, my clinic. Uh, and I started enjoying uh, glaucoma work more than perhaps retina work. So it was kind of a glaucoma grew on me rather than I choosing it uh, consciously. Basically, uh, we, we all know glaucoma is, is a chronic problem and it leads to uh, severe visual handicap and if you don't treat it, uh, most of these patients will go blind and uh, will, be, will lose their independence to do things. So whenever you are associated with a patient for a long time, say you have been treating somebody for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, uh, that's how long I've been practicing glaucoma actually. So that means... Uh, uh, you know, then, then you know the outcome of your treatment on a long term basis and if you can find people who are still coming to you for the last 25-30 years and uh, they are independent, they can come to your clinic and they can chat with you about their life and uh, what the difficulties they face or what, the, what are the, their achievements, I think that, is a, that gives you a lot of satisfaction and that is, uh, is a great feeling and that, that's what actually uh, creates a lot of happiness. So I, I would say that is the, I think the driving force that, uh, that we have behind treating glaucoma patients. Talking about my career in glaucoma, uh, I can say with a lot of sat satisfaction that it has been a you know, good, good choice uh, at some point of time whenever I made this and it has been very satisfying to work with glaucoma patients. Uh, as, as we know glaucoma is kind of a long term uh, chronic disease and there are a lot of unknown things about glaucoma. Uh, being in PGI also is very uh, gives you very unique opportunities because this is a very academic research or oriented institute and you have a lot of students around you, you have researchers and you have patients who have real problems and uh, uh, they need solutions. So when we all work together, it actually creates an atmosphere where you could do a lot more to your patients than otherwise you would be able to do. So over a period of time, you know, when you, when you are dealing with complex situations and when you find solutions to it, when you are able to help people, uh, I think that is something which keeps you motivated. There are always challenges in whatever you do and uh, glaucoma is uh, no exception. Uh, there would be ups and downs uh, happening. Uh, but I think uh, the, uh, the most the most important and the biggest challenge that we face in, in relation to glaucoma is basically uh, a lack of awareness. Uh, people just don't know that they have glaucoma and this also to some extent true for the physicians because their understanding of glaucoma is also uh, sometimes not that good. So these are the two major challenges that actually we, we face. Uh, this is important because 90% uh, of glaucoma in India remains undiagnosed and the, the main reason for that is uh, because people don't know about it. So to bringing people to the clinic uh, where they can be diagnosed uh, is, is a challenge uh, because glaucoma is a silent disease. Uh, there's no one test which you can do to detect glaucoma. There's no one way of treating uh, glaucoma 
and uh, you have to customize the treatment as per the uh, patient's circumstances. So therefore, it is very important actually that the patient are aware of the disease and they are aware of different options they have. To make them aware is a challenge. So in the last five years, we have done close to 15, 16 workshops uh, with the people, uh, with ophthalmologists in, around in this region. And uh, now they are, most of them are now practicing glaucoma and they are helping pe people in their own way. So I would say the, the biggest challenge still remains is the ignorance. Uh, at different levels and that's what uh, we have to deal with and we uh, that's an ongoing fight we, has, we, are, we continue to do that and that will you know go on uh, that will take time I think last line for the graduates, uh, uh, that basically is, uh, you know, I would say that uh, when you are training ophthalmology, uh, try to get a more holistic, more inclusive kind of a training. Don't jump or right in the beginning, you know, some, certain things look very gra glamorous that give you, you know, kind of immediate spotlight. But I think you have to uh, resist that temptation, go for a more holistic training, uh, spend time with all specialities and uh, see what uh, appeals your heart. Uh, more important thing here is to not not only to look from your practice point of view but also look from patient's point of view uh, what are the requirements of the patient what are their needs uh, who are the patients who really need help and if you can identify you know some group of patients you can make a difference in their life uh, that's where one should be uh, aiming at <music>